How's it going, everybody? My name is Magneti, and I welcome you to the Mothership. Today, we will be navigating the nightmare that is hell let loose for novices, of course. Let's get started. All right, first off, I do want to mention that I'm kind of expecting that you've played your first match, you know, like gotten into the game, done a little bit of something here or there, you know, so if you haven't done that, that's fine. You'll probably still get value out of this video, but I just want you to understand that I'm kind of more so coming at this video as, you know, you've played maybe a game, maybe two, ideally, you know, so just keep that in mind while you peruse this video here. All right, jumping right in, we're going to start off with number one, and that's the basics. Today, we're going over 10 things, so bear with me. All right, the basics. So we're going to go over the game mechanics, okay? So there's things like tanks, live artillery, destroyable buildings. There's a lot of different spawning mechanics in this game that are unique, and there's a chain of command as well amongst all kinds of other things within Hell Let Loose. There are a lot of unique mechanics in general. So let's talk about like vehicles, for example. There's different types of vehicles. They act differently. They drive differently. They are all very unique in their own ways. Things like live artillery. I honestly kind of consider that a vehicle, but there's actual live controllable artillery. So any of the artillery and explosions you see in the game are not like just automated type things. They're actual live players. Destroyable buildings, a lot like Battlefield kind of. If you've ever played Battlefield, buildings can be destroyed. Certain structures can be destroyed and manipulated through explosions and tanks and artillery, vehicles, etc. Now the spawn mechanics are very unique in Hell Let Loose. There's these things called outposts and garrisons, and those are your two main spawn points. There's also something called an airhead. Now, those are your three major spawn points. Now, a garrison is a spawn point for the entire team to spawn on. An outpost is something that your squad leader places down that only your squad can spawn on. And an airhead is a airdropped intrusive spawn for your entire team to spawn on. There's also a chain of command in Hell Let Loose. You have your regular infantryman, which is likely you. You have your squad leader, and then you have your commander as well. So you're going to want to utilize that while you play. Now, I do want to bring up the shooting mechanics in the game as well. It it, this is a World War II realism game, so the shooting is very cold. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it is very realistic. You have World War II guns. They act like World War II guns. The iron sights are all you really get unless you play as a sniper. Now, obviously, again, if you have played a match or two, you will have realized this. You have World War II grenades, which all act as they should. There's just a lot of realism in this game, okay? Because it is a World War II realism game. So now keeping that in mind, you know, you're gonna wanna compensate for bullet effect, like bullet drop, bullet speed. You know, you're gonna wanna compensate for that when you're shooting at long range. Now, something that is important though, is that headshots are like 99% of the time will kill someone instantaneously. I've never had an issue with that. Never had a headshot and it didn't kill him. And body shots, upper, upper body chest area is usually a one shot kill below the middle chest or the stomach area and below is usually a one shot kill if you're close and a two shot kill if you're far away. Now, if you shoot somebody in the foot, it should only still take two shots to kill them, but I really don't know. I haven't tested it, so I couldn't tell you exactly, but that'd be my guess. Now, the last thing I want to cover about basic mechanics is that there's two game modes. There's offensive and warfare, and we're going to talk about that a little later in the video. So stick around if you want to hear more about that. All right. Number two, jumping in head first. This is a pretty simple one. Finding a server is going to be your biggest challenge. Honestly, in my opinion, at least finding a server with low ping can be pretty difficult. Now, finding your role is going to be the next most important thing when you're jumping into Hell Let Loose. You're going to want to play as some of the other roles. I would highly recommend just playing as infantry or riflemen starting out and just kind of play a game or two. Really, you could just play one game as a rifleman and then uh, kind of just move on to some of the other roles that you may want to play as, like a support role or an engineer or something along those lines. Now, with the roles, it does, you know, there's a lot of different play styles and options that you have when it comes to that. And again, this is kind of something that we're going to go over more a little later in the video as well. Something else you should be doing when you jump in is familiarizing yourself with the controls. You know, keep in mind things like left click is an overhand throw for a grenade and right click is an underhand throw. One will kill you, one will kill the enemy. And of course, you know, you're going to want to maybe get familiar with driving if that's something you're going to want to do, or if you just want to ride with friends, that's fine. But just kind of get familiar with the controls. It's not too much different from any other game, but it is a little different. Now, the last thing I want to mention with jumping in headfirst is communication. And if you watched my top three beginner tips video, you'll know that communication was my number one tip. 
So again, this is something else that we'll also be talking about a little bit in the video. So uh, yeah, let's get into that. Teamwork and comms, number three. Now, listen, use your mic, okay? If you have a mic and you don't use it, you can't play this game, okay? This game heavily, 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 there's even a warning when you first launch the game that this game heavily relies on communication to play. So use your comms, again, well, not again, because you didn't watch my top three tips, which you should, but one, you've got your squad chat, which is green, you've got your VoIP chat, which is blue, and then if you decide to play as a squad leader or commander, you have your command chat as well. Now, what's really important here is who you're talking to, what you say, when you say it, where you are when you say it, why you say it, and not as much important, but how you say it as well. So the five W's here, pretty simple. Who it should be you talking about somebody else or something else? What? Again, it should be talking about something else, you know, unless you're playing casual, there's nothing going on. That's fine, too. You can chit chat. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. When uh, not talking over other people, that's pretty important. Definitely try your best to not talk over other people and make sure you listen to because somebody might be saying the same thing as you where make sure you provide information about where you're talking about where you are where something is in relation to where you are just kind of think about you know how that can affect the battlefield now why you're saying it are you you know are you adding value or are you just kind of like you know freaking out which you know i've definitely had my fair share of freak outs like oh my god there's a fucking tank you know whatever it might be and then lastly how you say it honestly that's not really that important say whatever the fuck you want right now, if you found these first three points useful so far, go ahead and drop a sub down below so I know I'm doing something right here and I'll keep providing you this kind of content. Rolling into number four, we're going to be talking about roles, all the pun intended, and loadouts. So there are 14 different roles in Hell Let Loose. I'm just going to brisk over them really quick. There's anti-tank, assault, automatic rifle, commander, crewman, engineer, machine gunner, medic, officer, rifleman, sniper, spotter, support, and tank commander. Now, three of these, or four rather, the commander, officer, spotter, and tank commander are all squad leader or commander positions. So the commander obviously is the commander position. So all of those are gonna be more a advanced role, especially tank commander and commander. Those are gonna be extremely advanced roles. Now, I'm gonna briskly touch over some of these quick and try to give the best pointers I can. I don't have a lot of experience with some of these roles, so it might not be the best tips or I might not really be able to provide much info for you there. So anti-tank, this one's pretty simple. This is actually one of my favorites when I'm not playing as officer. Anti-tank, really, you're kind of just like a regular rifleman, right? You have a rifle, you have a rocket launcher or, you know, a Panzer Strick. However you want to I don't know how the hell to say that. That was probably really bad. But anyway, you know, you got a rocket launcher as your secondary. Your main job is to take down tanks and other vehicles, right? And a fun quick tip here as a anti-tank player or role, you can take down garrison spawns, which we went over a little briskly earlier with your rocket launcher. So you can blow those up with your rocket launcher. That's pretty impressive and very valuable information. So if you see one from far away and it's kind of in an open field, you can blow it up. Just make sure it's not yours and it's actually the enemy's. So the next role is Assault, and Assault is actually a lot like Officer, however it does have a little tweaks to it. So one, as Assault, you're not playing as the squad leader, but however you do have a fully automatic weapon, and you do have a hammer, which is pretty useful, as well as frag grenades and smoke grenades. So this Assault role is going to be really valuable for pushing up on enemy lines, and if your squad is pressuring enemy lines, you're definitely going to want to play as an Assault and play heavy aggression with your squad and push up on those close quarters areas and apply those smokes and grenades where they're needed. Also along with the hammer, for engineers, they can build things, which we'll talk about just a little later, and Assault can help build that with the hammer. Next up for rolls is going to be the Automatic Rifleman, and the Automatic Rifleman is actually kind of a happy medium between Assault and Machine Gunner. So you're going to have a hammer, you're going to have a fully automatic rifle or gun, and you're going to be wanting to suppress slash box in the opponents with your grenades and beaming them down to death. And make sure you stick close to your squad, kind of give them covering fire. It's not quite a Machine Gunner where you're literally just emptying out a magazine to suppress an entire group of people, but it is definitely a slightly more aggro role as automatic rifleman than you would play as a machine gunner, for example. 
Moving on to Commander, I'm not really going to touch into this one too much because you're not going to be playing this role for quite a while, but briefly, the Commander just commands the entire map, has control over a lot of the resources for the map, and where to disperse different things. Next is Crewman. That's going to be a tank role. The Crewman is a basic Crewman for a tank. You don't have a primary weapon. You have a pistol and a torch to engineer your way out of sticky situations kind of repair your tank a little bit. And your main point as a crewman is to be in the tank, helping your tank commander in any way they need help. Next is gonna be Engineer, that's another one of my favorite roles. Engineer, you're basically fortifying previous defenses. So once you capture a point, you're gonna to wanna to get there as soon as possible, clear all the enemies off with your squad, and then you're gonna want your support player, which we'll talk about very soon, to drop supplies for you, and then you're gonna build stuff. It's amazing. Next up is Machine Gunner. Again, that's very much like Automatic Rifleman. However, it's much more suppression and defensive kind of. It's a little hard to explain, but just imagine standing somewhere. You can run once in a while. You're just kind of slow and just absolutely raining havoc down a street with broken buildings. Next up is Medic. Medic, this one's pretty simple. I enjoyed playing this one for a while before I kind of found my groove with Engineer and Anti-Tank and Officer, of course. Anyways, Medic, pretty straightforward. It's a lot like a Rifleman. You get the same type of weaponry. However, you have many more bandages and you can revive people. Now, your main role is going to be reviving people, specifically people in your squad and people that are in a safe area to revive, not people that are in hot zones because that would be a waste of a life for yourself. So you're going to revive them and you're going to heal them immediately after because you have a boatload of med packs and they do not. So that is a very valuable position to play. Next up is Officer. Again, this is a bit more of an advanced position, so I'm not going to cover it too much. However, it is a lot like the Assault class. You have an Assault weapon, you have a Secondary, you have two Smokes, two Frag Grenades, and you can also place what's called Outposts, and your job is to really just manage the conversation between your Commander's requests and your squad and be able to be a good leader to move your squad where it needs to be. Next up is Rifleman. Rifleman is the main role that Hell Let Loose wants you to play as, or Black Matter LTD, the development company, wants you to play as when you first start. And it is a very basic role. You have an ammo pack, you have a rifle, and your job is to support your squad in any way that you can, obviously continue to communicate, but you're gonna wanna be getting those goddamn headshots and dropping ammo for your machine gunners and your automatic riflemen and your officers and your assault classes. Next up is Sniper. Now, I've never played as this role. I did play as Spotter, which was really enjoyable. However, Sniper, pretty simple. You're gonna wanna listen to what your Spotter says as your leader, that's pretty natural, I feel like, and snipe people. There's a lot of different ways you can play as Recon. You can play behind the lines, which will be a series I have coming up soon, or you can play on the defensive and rain havoc from a distance. Next up is Spotter. Again, I mentioned that briefly. It's a lot like the Officer and or Assault class. However, it is for a Recon class. And your job is a little different because, again, you're playing Recon. Now, Recon and Sniper are a little bit more advanced, so I won't go too deep into those. Next up is Support. Now, Support is another one of my favorites. So Support, Engineer, Anti-Tank, and Officer are my favorite roles to play as. Moving back into support, you have a supply pack that you can drop down to assist your engineers in building things or to support your officer in placing garrisons. This is a very crucial role because you can drop supplies in places that need supplies immediately, or you can fall back on defense and hang out with your engineer in your squad and just build stuff. It's a lot of fun and has two really great ways to play it. Sorry, that was a mouthful for me to say. Next and last is Tank Commander. Again, this is an officer squad lead type role, so I won't go too deep into it. It's a lot like the other officer squad lead roles, fully automatic rifle, secondary weapon. Your job is to lead tanks into battle and rain havoc wherever the commander requests tanks. So that was just the first part of number four. Next up, I wanna talk about loadouts and leveling up. I'll make this pretty brief, it's pretty simple. The more you play, the more you level up. The more you get kills, the more XP you get, the more defensive, offensive, etc. Basically, play the game, get XP, level up, and then you also have loadouts as well. So loadouts, there's three for every role, and they provide different types of gear for each role. So keep an eye out for that. When you get any role to level three, you'll be able to unlock the next loadout. Now, which role would I suggest to start with and why? I would mainly suggest if it's your first game, I would suggest playing as Rifleman, just the traditional Rifleman. Play that for your first match. That'll get you used to the controls, kind of figuring out how the game works. And then after that, I would highly suggest trying out Medic or Assault. Those would be two good classes to get into. However, the path that I went down, if you'd like to follow the way I went, 
is I started with Rifleman and then I went to Medic. And then after Medic, I played support for just a little bit. And then after support, I went straight into Officer and it just kind of worked. After my first match as an officer, of course, I uh, went back to Rifleman for a little while to kind of figure out where my roots were. But as I played a little more as some of those roles, mostly medic for a while there, I got very comfortable with the game and decided I wanted to try out officer and it became my favorite role. Now, usually I don't play as officer if I don't feel like talking as much because there is a lot of talking that goes on with the officer role. But anyway, moving on to number five, we're going to be talking about map awareness and strategy. This one's pretty simple. Learn the maps and just stay aware, okay? It's just gonna take time, right? You're gonna wanna learn where the POIs are. You're gonna wanna learn how to strategize around the POIs and what areas to stay in and what areas to stay out of and when and why. Honestly, you can really apply the five W's to just about everything in this game and to all of these categories that I'm providing you with here. So really just think about where enemy garrisons could be and think about the best place to place a friendly garrison. It's pretty simple. Play the game, learn the maps, kind of open the map and study it a lot, you know, here and there. Just make sure you're staying aware of what's going on around you and continuing to communicate with your team, of course. That one was pretty simple. Moving on to number six, offensive versus warfare game modes. Now, I did mention offensive versus warfare game modes earlier in the video. I want to talk about that a little bit now. So basically, offensive is a game mode where you start out as either a team that has all of the points captured or has none of the points captured. And your objective is to either keep all of them or as many as you can if you're on the defending team or your objective as the attacking team is to seize all the points. This one's pretty straightforward. Think about D-Day. OK, that's what I think about, although I am from the United States. So that is kind of the first thing I think about in World War Two. But anyways, D-Day was a offensive type game mode. The United States started on the beach, of course, with allies, and they pushed against the Germans all the way to the back line. Right. So they started with nothing and got everything right. Honestly, I don't know if that's actually how that went, because I suck at history. They, I know nothing about D-Day. I just know that it's a famous day. Anyways, now that I'm done embarrassing myself about how little history education I have. So inoffensive, how to capture the points, right? So you're going to have to be inside the circle on the map in order to capture the point, whereas it's a little different in warfare. Now, the strategies for offensive are also different. You're going to want to think a lot more aggressive unless you're playing the defense, right? Basically, what I'm saying here is that your strategies are going to be a lot more drastic, whereas warfare, they're not quite as drastic. So if you're attacking, you're going to want to be much more aggressive. However, continue to communicate and make sure you work with your team. Now, if you're playing defense, you're going to want to be a lot more defensive. And honestly, if you're playing engineer support, I would definitely just fortify that second point as soon as possible. Now, what mindset should you be? And I kind of went over that already. So basically just focus on defending or attacking and focus on coordinating with your team and getting the flanks in where you need them, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how should you adjust playing as your role? Again, it's going to kind of vary depending on if you're attacking or defending. Just keep in mind that if you're attacking, you're going to want to be more aggressive. Again, if you're playing engineer support, for example, or maybe let's say assault, you're going to want to be extra aggressive playing as assault, but also still ensuring that you're sticking with your team. And then, of course, the opposite with defending. Now, let's move into warfare and kind of talk about the same things. So how do you capture points, right? So if you're within one square of the map into enemy lines, you will have a 1x capture rate. If you're on the circle on the map of the capture point, you will have a 3x capture rate. And then there's also other things that go into factor for that as well. But that's a little more advanced and it's not really that big of a deal. It's kind of only controlled by the commander. Now, some strategies for warfare. Obviously, you're going to want to keep in mind, again, it's warfare. So you're going to be pushing back and forth. You're going to want to be able to be defensive and offensive at the same time. You're going to want to be able to be aggressive and not aggressive or, you know, whatever the opposite of aggressive would be simultaneously if need be. You're going to want to be able to back up and back off of the aggression at a moment's notice in case you need to defend a previous point. And then again, just keep in mind, adjust how you play as your role based on the moment. And then lastly for this here, point six, just find your preferred mode. If you like offensive, play offensive. If you like warfare, play warfare. Personally, I prefer warfare. Easy enough, moving into number seven, vehicle gameplay. Now, obviously, since this is World War II, there's going to be fighter jets, flying tanks, helicopters, Iron Man, fucking Captain America. You're going to have Black Widow up in this. Anyways, there's trucks and tanks, right? That's really all you got. I also consider artillery a part of the vehicles. I don't know why. It just I don't, wh where else would you put that, right? Like, what are you, you going to give it its own category? 
So you've got two types of trucks. You've got a transport truck, which hauls all the dumbass bullet sponges around with you, can carry about 10 of those motherfuckers around. And then you've got a supply truck, which carries two people and about 200 supplies that you can drop just about anywhere. Now, obviously, you can see the very important value between the two and the very important difference as well. Now, artillery, again, it's live artillery. You control it, you load it, and you shoot it, okay? Now, the only tip I really have with this, since I've barely touched artillery before, is to open your map, ping where you want to shoot, adjust the aim, and shoot. That is all I got for you, for artillery. I'm not good at it. I I'm sorry. Hopefully, you don't want to play artillery. Now, the best tips I have for general vehicles, which also real quick, I didn't mention a lot about tanks, but you've got light tanks or recon tanks, medium tanks and heavy tanks. So light, medium, heavy, right? Pretty simple. I don't do a whole lot with tanks, but I could probably tell you this here. Heavy tanks move slower. Medium tanks kind of in the middle. Recon tanks move the fastest, right? But they don't move as fast as trucks. Also, fun fact about recon tanks, some of them have capabilities, or potentially all of them, I'm not entirely sure, to scan the area and mark enemies within the area, kind of like a UAV in Call of Duty, but on a smaller scale, not the entire map. Now, the only tips I have for you for vehicles is if you're playing as a officer or as a supply role or unit, grab a supply truck and kind of just drop it where you need supplies, right? Pretty simple, straightforward. Other than that, don't be a fucking dipshit. Don't get into a transport truck by yourself with maybe two people from your squad or like one other person and you know it's the beginning of the game and you just load it in and other people are going to be spawning and drive away. Don't do that. If you do that, you're a terrible human being, okay? Just not good. All right, moving into number eight, okay, tips for survival and combat. So strategies for movement and positioning. I would highly recommend listening to your officer on this, okay? Like as a beginner to the game, you don't really need to know a boatload about movement and positioning strategies. However, I will say sometimes going full on with your entire 50 member team all in one direction on one side of the enemy is not the way to go, right? Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Just keep in mind that sometimes you're gonna have to flank, sometimes flanking isn't gonna be the best bet. But if you're gonna commit to something, try and commit to something with your entire squad, okay? Keep in mind where enemy garrisons and outposts might be placed, again, those are the spawners, and disengage those as soon as possible. Again, don't forget, anti-tank can blow up enemy garrisons. Now, when should you engage, okay? The other day, I was playing Hell Let Loose, and I was in a bush by myself with a rifle, and I killed about 10 people all by myself in enemy territory before I got killed. Now, that probably wasn't the best thing I could have done in a team aspect. However, it was a lot of fun. So ultimately, if you want to win, engage when you have your team with you and you have more than just one squad in enemy lines. Of course, unless you're trying to do a flank and you're the squad to be flanking, then you're going to want to engage when you're close, right? Just some of this is pretty obvious and you'll kind of feel it in the moment, right? Just think before you do sometimes. Now, how do you fight effectively, okay? I did mention earlier, headshots, one-shot kill. Chest and above, usually a one-shot kill from close range, sometimes two depending on the range, right? Now, make sure you're leaning. Use Q and E to lean. You're gonna wanna lean around walls, corners, doors, entryways, hallways, driveways, doorways, long roadways, cornerways, boxways, wallways, just lean. Lean, 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 lean. Leaning is going to help you a lot. It displays a lot less of your body. However, you obviously still can get headshotted right in the nutsack. That doesn't make any sense. You're going to also want to make sure you engage. If you see somebody, say like you're in the middle of a road prone and you see somebody and you have a good shot, shoot them. You know, just if you want to fight effectively, shoot first. That's my tip right there. Now, really gauging when or where to and not to engage can be pretty difficult as a general tip. So I'm going to say just focus on what's going on in your area, right? Make smart decisions. Second to last year, number nine, supporting your team. Now, I did talk about the previous roles quite a bit, and that took up a good chunk of the video, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on how to support your team as different roles, because we talked about that already, right? Make sure if you're playing as support, drop supplies where it's needed, not where it's fucking not needed, randomly in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. If you're playing as an engineer, don't put shit randomly where it doesn't make any sense and it won't be needed. Put it somewhere that it's requested or you think will be very useful, etc., etc. Don't revive people in a hot zone where there's six dead guys right on the ground all right next to each other because you're just gonna fucking die as a medic, right? Pretty simple. Now, I did talk a little bit about supplies and I feel like I emphasize the importance of it pretty well, but I just wanna reiterate here, right? Supplies are required to place garrisons, okay? And garrisons are spawners for your entire team. Supplies are also required to place defenses amongst a couple of other things like repair stations, for example. 
Again, supporting your team, continue to communicate. Talk about destroying or locating spawns or mines. Talk about movements, flanks, infantry locations, tank locations, tank flanks, tank snipers, tank. If it's a tank, tank it. Tank it with a tank on the tank head. You know what I'm saying? Just talk, 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 talk. Not over anybody. Don't talk over anybody. Provide valuable communication, okay? That's the best way to support your team. Finally, number 10, thank you for bearing with me. This has been a very long video, one of my longer videos, but I just wanna talk about progression and persistence, right? If you wanna get good at anything, not even just video games, it's gonna take time, right? Just play, have fun. You know, you can focus hard on different matches and play really hard and really aggressively on different matches. And in some matches, you should just have fun, right? Get friends to play with you, make friends on the servers. A lot of the community here in Hell Let Loose is pretty non-toxic and very bearable. So I'm sure you can find friends somewhere, some way, somehow, right? Now, we talked about loadouts a little bit before, get to level three with any role, you can unlock the next loadout, but there's also kind of like skins and skin modifications you can change the color and different types of clothing for different roles and people, etc. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot of progression. There's a level, there's a role level, and there's like skins and painting your clothes and stuff. It's 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 pretty basic, but the rest of the game is great. So like honestly, in my opinion, it makes up for it. Alright, lastly here, never not navigate the nightmare, okay? Thus nullifying your noviceness, right? One more time, okay? Never not navigate the nightmare and thus nullifying your noviceness, right? Always just dive in, right? Obviously don't make stupid decisions, but dive into the action, follow the action, follow through with your actions, and you'll eventually nullify your noviceness by never not navigating the nightmare. Other than that, stay tuned for more gaming content and we'll talk again real soon. Peace.